Hello, I'm Enzo Strider and welcome to my first game review. Now I'm trying a different system here because I'm hoping the video quality comes out a lot better. Um, but I'm sorry the audio quality is going to be similar to my um, past videos. Um, I've actually broken my microphone which was pretty good and it was better than the um, audio from my, this is my third video, my previous videos, all three videos. I was going to use that microphone but unfortunately it's broken before I got the chance to use it. I will be returning it and getting a new one because if you're taking the time to click on my videos and watch these, you at least deserve the best um, audio and visual quality. That's at least in my opinion. I mean just clicking on them, if you click on my videos thank you very much. Um, if you click like or subscribe thank you even more because um, you don't have to do that stuff. Um, just you viewing my videos is enough for me. So um, let's just get on with the review. Um, yeah, I promised myself I would review this game first before anything else. I mean, if you look at my username and you know N7 is in the Mass Effect series, I promised myself I'd review this game before um, any other game, before Mass Effect, before any Mass Effect DLC. I wanted to review this. And if you go and look up um, in the Guinness Book of World Records um, 2012, the most gamers edition, the most critically polarizing game of all time. This game is sat right there. Deadly premonition for the Xbox 360. I'll also say as well that it's not just out on the Xbox 360, it is coming out for the PlayStation 3 in a director's cut, which just makes me want the PlayStation 3 even more because I really would like to see what they took out of this game because it's kind of crazy. I, I like this game. But I'm going to be brutally honest in my, in my review and tell you exactly what I think of it because um, I wouldn't want to think I'm misleading you guys. So um, as you can see there, I actually got a 10 out of 10 from Destructoid. I don't know if you actually trust their review system, but 10 out of 10. It also got as low as 2 out of 10 from uh, other websites. Uh, yeah, so um, it's kind of hard to put this into a genre as I started thinking about what I was actually going to say in my review because... What I came up with was it's a comedy, survival, horror, open world crime caper. <laughs> if that makes any sense, because that's the kind of game it is. This game makes very little sense most of the time. Um, so I'm just going to give you a brief, um, brief um, opening about um, the, uh, the story as the game opens, because this review is going to be spoiler free. I don't want to spoil anything for you guys, um, especially if you haven't played this game. Um, if you could refrain from putting spoilers into the comments, that would be awesome as well. Because if anyone um, goes out and gets this game after my review, I want them to experience it first hand. So please, if you're going to leave um, a comment, try and leave it spoiler th um, free, uh, free for me, just for those who haven't. Thanks a lot. So um, I'm just going to talk briefly about the opening story. Um, you play in this special agent called Agent Francis York Morgan, just called me York, as he says constantly. Um, He's been dispatched to a small town somewhere in Middle America um, to investigate the um, death of, well, the murder of a young woman called Anna Graham, I believe, Anna Ingram, Anna Graham, I think it's Anna Graham. Um, she was found tied to a tree, um, cut up and down the middle, um, tied, tied, tied to a tree, cut up and down the middle, and um, yeah, le left like that. Oh, she was, she was stripped naked as well. Um, there's no nudity in this game, just uh, to clarify. It's just, um, that's the way she was found. And that fly is getting dangerously close to the lens. I'm going to just shoo that off. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so then that's where the story opens up. Francis York, York, York Morgan um, dispatched from a town, Middle America, called Greenvale to help the local law enforcement investigate the murder of a young woman named Anna Graham, or Anna Ingram. Um, and that's where the story picks off. Uh, now, the reason why I say survival horror is because there is kind of like a zombie, they're called shadows in the game, so I'm going to get to that in just a minute because I wanted to talk about the graphics first. This game was first announced back at E3 2007 I believe, and even back then it got um, compared to Twin Peaks by um, David Lynch, the TV series. If you haven't seen it, I recommend actually watching it, it's really good. Um, but maybe I'll talk about Twin Peaks in another video. Um, yeah, so considering this was first shown in 2007, I think this was originally um, going to be a PlayStation 2 title. Um, and the graphics show, um, the graphics aren't brilliant. 
But as I've said numerous times before, and I'll say it again, a brilliant story will always gloss over any graphical shortcomings. So the graphics aren't brilliant, they're decidedly last gen, but um, the story is brilliant. So if you enjoy a story and graphics aren't important to you, um, I'd, I'd actually say like you'll enjoy the story as much as I did. Um, if you're a graphics whore, then stay away because this game is not for you, it's not pretty. Um, I also wanted to talk about the sound briefly. Um, the soundtrack is heavily focused on jazz. Sometimes there's jazz playing during serious scenes and sometimes it's kind of jarring. There'll be a serious scene playing out and there's still a light-hearted jazz going on. I think there's even some music with a kazoo and there's also a whistling um, theme where there's whistling going on. Just thinking about it, I want to whistle that soundtrack. Um, the whistling one is actually really good. If you, if you play the game, you'll know immediately what I'm talking about. You'll hear it once and you'll be whistling that stuff through the rest of the day, seriously. I whistle it all the time at work and quite a lot of people just don't know what I'm whistling like. It sounds familiar to them but they don't know quite where I'm from. Um, but the rest of the, the sound effects is actually quite good. It's, it's capable to say the least, you know, if you, if you bite your hand gun off it, it sounds like a gun. Um, you know, if you swing um, a lead pipe, it sounds like you're swinging a pipe. You know, it's, it's basic, capable sound effects. Um, I wanted to also talk about the um, the enemies briefly because um, the only thing, to me there only seems to be one type of enemy, um, the shadows, which are kind of like a zombie kind of thing. I know this it, um, sounds strange, but you've got to play the game to understand. Um, it does explain kind of where these shadows are coming from um, because it doesn't the, the combat doesn't tie in with the rest of the game. The rest of the game is um, an open world um, crime investigation. But when you go into combat, it's against these strange, like, zombie shadow creatures. All I can say is you've got to play the game to actually understand and stick with it to the end to understand actually what's going on. Um, I wanted to talk about the controls briefly as well because um, this ties in directly to the enemies. The controls aren't brilliant. They harken come back to um, old school Resident Evil where if you want to shoot, you've got to plant your feet and you can't move. There is the option to strafe on the, on the um, left and right bumper. Well, that's about it for your move. Your movement. You've got to plant your feet before you can fire. So, um, I know that um, that it was a big complaint in Resident Evil um, Four and Five, and a lot of people were saying we should be able to move and shoot at the same same time. Now, now we have that in Resident Evil Six, and you don't want to know my opinion on that game because um, it just looks like a third person Call of Duty now. But um, I'm getting off topic, and I want to go back into. Uh, the, just talk a bit, um, a bit about the controls. The controls are kind of um, difficult to just pick up and learn. Um, at least I found that way. As, but as, as soon as you play the game for maybe um, an hour and a half, you get the basic controls down and you're able to handle um, handle yourself in a combat situation quite um, quite capably. I wanted to also talk, to talk briefly about um, something which I actually really enjoy from the game, which is every time you get a headshot in the game, um, Francis York Morgan will actually compliment you through the, uh, I'm just going to call him York, York from now on. York will actually compliment you with um, amazing, great shot, awesome, and stuff like that. Every time you uh, you get a headshot, he'll go, good job, great, awesome. And I actually kind of thought it was kind of funny, um, considering you're black biting, it's like a sort of um, weird, bendy, over backwards zombie. I even made the terrible mistake of my girlfriend was watching me play this game when I first um, played it. And when I first came across my first um, zombie in the game, I actually said, My, the locals are really friendly. They'll bend over backwards for you. And I immediately regretted saying it. Um, yeah, so if you've played the game, you'll know. If you haven't, I, I recommend it. It really would. But I'm going to go into a few more things first. Um, I want to talk about the cast. The cast is nuts. They all seem to have some sort of um, mental unbalancing, particularly York. He talks constantly to an imaginary friend or someone back at FBI quarters or maybe he's talking directly to the player and he refers to whoever this person is all the way through the game as Zack. What's that Zack? You want me to talk about other characters for a little while? No problem Zack. <laughs> but I want to say one more thing about Zack. If, if you're driving around the town, um, they'll constantly talk about old B-movies which personally 
I enjoyed. It's just a little bit of dialogue going on between York and his imag imaginary friend um, about old B movies like um, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Um, they talk about old 80s rock music. I believe at one point they even talk about Godzilla vs. Mothra, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and just in talking about these old cheesy B, B movies just added more to the game for me. Because it's nuts and it, ha it plays no part of the game, but it's completely crazy and somehow it fits. And this is a trick that this game keeps pulling off. It's a mishmash of ideas that don't exactly fit and crazy things that happen and none of it fits but somehow it makes perfect sense. It's completely insane. Um, so I was, I was talking about the cast. Um, another one of my favourite characters is um, Mr. Stewart. So I'll say it's Mr. Stewart. Um, he's in there. He's another one of my um, favourite characters. There's uh, um, a girl in there called Emily Wyatt, I believe. Emily Wyatt who's another one of my favourite characters, she kind of plays like a love interest in, in, in the game, but it's not forced like in most games, like um, the here's your love interest and they're going to fall in love. It's, it's not forced, it's more subtle than that, and you get the feeling that there's a relationship growing there, but not exactly like an in-your-face romance happening. It's, it's more subtle, uh, which I really enjoyed. I really liked that about this game. Um, Oh, yeah, there's, there's the dialogue. I've, I've, I'm sorry, I've got some notes here about what I wanted to talk about just to make it easier for me. There's the dialogue. This game has some of the best lines in the entire entire video game. All the video games I've got, this game has got some of the best lines ever. You'll not forget the dialogue. You'll want to quote this dialogue. I still want to meet someone called Mr. Stewart, so every time he speaks afterwards I can say, say so says Mr. Stewart. Just so I can use that line. There's, um, is it FK or TK? I'm, I think it's sure it's um, FK. FK and the coffee. Brilliant line. Um, the Sinner's Sandwich, um, which for stay tuned, we've got a small announcement at the end of this, um, at the end of this video. Um, it's going to be very brief. If you just want to click off after the review, that's fine. But um, you might want to stay tuned and, um, and hear what I've got to say. There's the Sinner's Sandwich, which is awesome, which is the, has to be the funniest scene in the entire game. You can't take this game seriously because there's comedy moments in there and some of the dialogue is absolutely crazy, but it's fun. It's just fun. I absolutely love this game. The dialogue especially, fantastic. So I'm going to wrap this up because I'm going on a bit too much. Um, I think I've talked about everything I want. I wanted to talk about the setting of Greenvale a bit more, but I've already said it's an open world. You can explore this at your leisure. You don't have to follow the main storyline until you're good and ready. You can go off doing side missions. There is side missions in here. You can um, go investigating the townspeople. You don't even have to go um, straight at the beginning. At the close to the beginning of the game, it actually says, um, "Meet me at the police station." Um, uh, Sheriff George Woodman, I believe his name is. Um, yeah, it says, "Meet me at the station." You don't have to do that. You can just go off and meet the townspeople and explore the town. There's a few mini games in there, um, such as um, fishing and darts. Um, so if you fire the darts through a gun. Um, and it, it's just it's just fun. You can explore it at your own time. So um, I don't need to go into into uh, setting too much. But that's the last thing I wanted to talk about. So my verdicts on this game, I've probably been really harsh on it. It probably sounds like I don't like this game with some of the, my criticisms on it. But as I've also said, it's got a bunch of crazy ideas that shouldn't fit together and shouldn't work. But it does. It's absolutely amazing and. I didn't think I was going to stick with this game to the end. I'll be perfectly honest, when I picked this up, after, see, after hearing the polarising reviews of it, I didn't think I'd stick with it to the end. And I did. I loved it. And at the end of it, I played something original, and that's what truly mattered. It was an original title. This wasn't a sequel, and it wasn't a yearly update. This was something truly original. And I think every gamer owes it to themselves just to try this. Just try it. I mean, when it first came out, this retailed at um, $20 or £20, and that was two years ago. How much is it going to cost you now just to try this? Not much. I'm sure you can pick it up second hand. You know, just try it. Tell them N7 Strider sent you, and they'll probably just knock a couple of quid off for you, or a couple of dollars off for you. Just try it. Do it as a favour to me. Just try it. I really like this game, and I think more people should give it a chance. It's a cult classic, 
And I don't want to see a sequel of this made. It just needs to be the one game. Just that little gem that we have this generation. And I really do love this game. That's about as high a recommendation as I can give to it. The whole thing, start to end, fantastic. And yeah, it was time for my short announcement. Now, I was looking at the quality and the audio quality of my last, I think I touched briefly upon the audio quality in this video. But I was looking at, on the video and audio quality of my last two um, videos and it wasn't brilliant. Um, it's down to the tools I'm using, not the equipment. So for, I'm going to take two weeks off. Now that may, um, may seem strange because I've just started on YouTube. Now I'm going to take two weeks off but bear in mind I do work as well. So really it's just four days to find some better tools um, so I can actually record in HD. I do have a HD camera sat right there but I want to be able to record in HD, capture better sound and that's really going to be four days split over two weeks because I do work as well so you're going to have to bear that in mind. Now I'm going to have to atone for this sin of disappearing for two weeks and I can only think of one way after playing this game. I am going to eat the Sinner's Sandwich. Now I mentioned this earlier, the Sinner's Sandwich comprises of bread, turkey, cereal, now I'm thinking I'm going to use Cheerios or something, and jam. Anyone who knows me well enough knows I cannot stand jam. Those ingredients combined together sound atrocious. There's been people online who said there's actually ate the Sinner's Sandwich, but I'm going to record myself eating the sandwich. Because I don't think I'm going to get to the end of this. Because I hate jam. I, in particular, I hate strawberry jam. And that's one of the main ingredients. So help me God. Also, when I come back, this may be round about the first of next month. Um, so um, maybe 15 days from now, my next video will be up. There will be my reaction to the Sinner's Sandwich. Which I'm not looking forward to, and also there will be my review of the Mass Effect 3 DLC Leviathan. I wanted to get a couple of days um, play on this first because I am a Mass Effect fan, and I didn't want the fact that I'm a Mass Effect fan judging. Um, you know, I, I didn't want it to be in, in pause on my judgment of the game or my review of the game. I wanted to give an honest review of this, so that's why it's going to take that little bit longer. I want to give it a few days to play through it a couple of times so I can give you guys an honest review. So um, I think I've gone over everything. Um, thank you for your future patience with waiting the two weeks until I return. I've been N7 Strider and I should go.